Welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10 Guys. My name is Danny Berg and today I'm going to be talking about the top 10 most wanted people in America. Now these are the men and women that the FBI deem either the most dangerous people out there or those who are actually on the run right now for very serious crimes. Although they list these people right there on the front page of the FBI website, you won't recognize a lot of their names or their faces, which isn't the best thing when it comes to people we should all be keeping an eye out for. Well, let's take a look at some of their names, their faces, what they did wrong, and what rewards there are for turning them in. And let's start with our number 10, Fidel Urbina. Mr. Urbina is a Mexican man who has been on the run from authorities since 1999 after sexually assaulting two women in Chicago and then killing one of them just seven months apart. The manhunt has been ongoing ever since. Now, Back in 2006, an arrest warrant was even issued in Mexico just in case he ever went back there again. As the years went by with no information about him, Fidel was finally added to the FBI's top 10 fugitives in June 2012. Despite this, the authorities have had no luck at all in finding him in the years since then. The FBI are now offering $100,000 for information leading to his arrest. He's said to be between 5'11 and 6'1, weighing 170 pounds with black hair, brown eyes, and with acne scars on the right side of his face. At number 9 now, we have Eduardo Revilo. Now, as far as authorities are aware, Eduardo is the highest ranked leader in one of the most notorious prison gangs in North America, the Berea. Azteca. Now, Eduardo is thought to be responsible for organizing and distributing weapons and drugs on both sides of the US Mexico border. The gang has been growing in power and numbers since they were founded back in 1986. Estimates even put their numbers at some 8,000 gang members strong and Eduardo is at the head of all of them. He got this position by stabbing and shooting the former leader in the neck seven times. And if he did that to his own boss, I think it's a safe bet that he's a bit of a danger to the public. He's thought to have undergone plastic surgery to alter his appearance and even changed his fingerprints to avoid detection. It's for all these reasons that the FBI is now offering $100,000 for any information leading to his capture. Next up at number eight is a man by the name of William Bradford Bishop Jr. Now this guy's story honestly sounds like something out of a movie. He apparently has one degree and two master's degrees in African studies and Italian. He spoke five languages fluently and was hired by the United States Foreign Service where he worked all over the world. With his wife and his family by his side, he honestly seemed like a model citizen. But on March the 1st, 1976, he was told he would not be getting the promotion he was looking for at that time. Now Bishop had been suffering from depression and did not take the news well at all. He went home and killed his wife, his mother and his three sons. By the time police knew what had happened, he had fled. People have apparently cited him since then in almost every single major European country in the last 40 years. Although it's been a long time, the FBI hasn't given up and they even released this sculpture showing what an aged bishop might look like today. For anyone who can point them to William Bradford Bishop Jr., the reward is $100,000. And now at number seven, we have Robert William Fisher. On April the 10th, 2001, Robert William Fisher is suspected of shooting his his wife in the back of her head and slashing his two children's throats before blowing up the family home. By the time the flames were under control, Fisher was on the run. It was thought he committed the murders because he was worried his wife was about to divorce him and he didn't want his kids to go through the same torment he went through when his own parents had divorced many years before. Now, Over the next two years, the FBI investigated hundreds of reports of his sightings, but nothing was ever found despite the $100,000 reward for his arrest. Okay, moving on to number six, we've got Brenda Delegado and a story of very twisted jealousy. On September the 2nd, 2015, 35 year old dentist Kendra Hatcher was gunned down in a Dallas parking garage by a gunman with a getaway driver. Brenda Delgado did not pull the trigger in this murder, but after a police investigation, it was discovered that she had orchestrated the whole 
thing. She was the mastermind. She did this because she was jealous of Kendra for dating her ex-boyfriend and had heard that he had introduced her to his parents and was planning a romantic trip with her to Mexico. The FBI said the murder was done in cold blood and was calculated months in advance. Brenda was initially questioned about the murders but fled at the first opportunity she had. Investigators into this crime had their suspicions that she was hiding out in Mexico and in April 2016 they were proved right. Delgado was captured in Mexico but she remains on the FBI's most wanted list because they are still trying to extradite her back to the US. Halfway through now guys at number 5 we have Glenn Stewart Godwin. Now in 1983 Godwin was sentenced to life in prison for the first degree murder of a former friend who he had stabbed 26 times with a butcher's knife. Just 4 years into his time in prison he escaped through a storm drain by crawling through it for 230 meters. Now I'd say you couldn't write that kind of stuff but uh, yeah Stephen King did. At the end of the pipe he found a raft in the river that was left for him by either his wife or a former cellmate. They had also painted arrows on the rocks along the river to direct him to safety. Now both of them were eventually convicted of helping Godwin escape but the man himself managed to get away to Mexico. There he was arrested for drug trafficking, put in prison and while the US was trying to extradite him back into the country he killed a fellow drug dealer in prison. Now this delayed the extradition process process and guess what Godwin did with all this extra time? He escaped. Yeah, again. You really, really couldn't write this. It's been 25 years since that second escape and all the FBI seems to know is that he's somewhere out there in Latin America and they're offering $100,000 if someone can narrow that down a bit and help them arrest this man who they say is still very much armed and very, very dangerous. Coming in at number 4 now, we've got Jason Derrick Brown. If you guys are wondering where all the famous robbers are on this list, then Jason Brown certainly fits the bill. On November the 29th, 2004, a security guard by the name of Robert Keith Plumares was collecting the money from a movie theatre in Phoenix, Arizona after Thanksgiving. As he was leaving with the money, Jason Brown walked up to him, shot him dead and took the money. The manhunt was very quick on Brown's heels. They actually tracked him down over the following week and at one point they missed him when they turned up to a house by just one hour. Now unfortunately they wouldn't ever be that close to him again. The trail eventually went cold in Portland. Since 2013 the FBI have actually doubled the amount of money they usually offer to $200,000 if someone can help them find Jason Derrick Brown. Oh and if you guys are thinking he looks quite a lot like the famous Hollywood actor Sean Penn, well you're not wrong, he does. The FBI themselves have mistakenly arrested Sean Penn's body double because they thought he was Jason Jason Derrick Brown twice, yeah, on two separate occasions. Poor guy, honestly, he just wants to look like Sean Penn for a living. What's the problem? Leave the guy alone. It's not his fault he has that face. Coming in at number three now, we have the fugitive on the run from Honduras, Alexis Flores. On July 29, 2000, Mota de Jesus left her two children alone while she collected some food from over the street. When she returned just a few minutes later, her five-year-old daughter, Iriana de Jesus, was gone. She was tragically found just five days later in a basement apartment. Alexis had sexually assaulted her, strangled her and then wrapped her up in a trash bag. At that time he was going by the name Carlos and he had fled far from the scene. Now over the next five years police actually arrested Alexis twice for two different offences but they had no idea that he was the same man as this murderer Carlos. They eventually deported him back to his native Honduras in 2005. Two years after that Alexis's DNA matched with Carlos's DNA and the police realised they were the same person. They immediately issued an arrest warrant but Alexis was nowhere to be found in either the US or Honduras. Police have not given up though and they are offering, you guys guessed it by this point, $100,000 to any information leading to the arrest of Alexis Flores. Next up at number 2 we have Yasser Abdul Saeed. Now this guy is twisted, I think it's fair to say that. He was an Egyptian immigrant to Texas and was extremely controlling of his two teenage daughters, Amina and Sarah. He simply wanted obedience from them that they just did not want to give. 
give him. Yes sir would actually follow them wherever they went, record them and even read their emails in secret. Yeah, very creepy stuff. There were even allegations of sexual abuse when the girls were younger. The message was very clear. I'm watching you, don't disobey me. Now despite all of this, Amina and Sarah were defiant. On Christmas Eve 2007, Yasser found out that his daughters had been dating boyfriends in secret. That was against all the rules and he was outraged. On New Year's Day 2008, he lured the girls into his taxi cab and told them that they were going for some food. Instead, he drove them to a secluded spot and shot them repeatedly before fleeing the scene. Sarah managed to make a desperate call to the police in which which she screamed, please help, my dad shot me, I'm dying. I heard that clip earlier and it's honestly one of the most chilling things I've ever heard. Police were too late to save them by the time they got there. Yes sir is said to be 6 foot 2, 180 pounds and still considered armed and dangerous. It's $100,000 to anyone who can help bring him to justice. And finally now we have the number one most wanted person in America, Victor Manuel Garina. Victor has been on the FBI's most wanted list for over 30 years, the longest of anyone on the list. That's part of the reason why he's actually so high on it. Now unlike other people we've talked about, Victor didn't kill or rape anyone. On September the 12th, 1983, he arrived at his job as an armoured car guard. That day, he visited a Wells Fargo depot in Connecticut with his two co-workers. Victor tackled them and bound them up. To make sure they didn't resist any further, he injected them with some sort of mixture of aspirin and water. Victor then set about loading seven million dollars into his car from the safe there. That's about 17 million dollars by today's standards. He then fled to Cuba. Over the years, the FBI have identified 17 suspects who were involved in this heist and they all belong to the group known as Los Macheteros. They tracked down 16 of them, but Victor has never been found. He's the only one still on the run. Because of the amount of money that was stolen for an outlawed group and the fact that he has been on the run for over 30 years, the FBI are offering an astonishing $1 million for any information leading to his arrest. For the first time in many years, the relationship between Cuba and America seems to be reaching a point where capturing Victor Manuel Garina might be a real possibility. Well guys, there you have it, 10 people that you probably want to stay clear of but also try and keep an eye out for. I know that seems a little bit contradictory but you guys get what I mean. Who do you think was the most dangerous person on this list and who do you think is the most likely to be captured on this list? Whatever your thoughts are and suggestions for future videos, let me know down there in the comments below and make sure you subscribe to this channel. My name is Danny Burke and I'll see all you guys in the next Most Amazing Top 10 video.